Everyone imagines the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in their own way. For some people this story is interesting, and for others it brings a feeling of horror. But one thing I know for sure, it's hard to imagine the Chernobyl plant without the huge ventilation tower. This is the view that stayed with us forever. But a few years ago everything changed. The ventilation tower, which has the official name VT2, was completely dismantled. Because of this, the project to remove the tower can be considered one of the most epic stages of work carried out in the post-accident period on the entire site. VT2 is a kind of symbol of the Chernobyl plant, and its disappearance changed the familiar appearance of the shelter object and the entire Chernobyl power plant. It is an unofficial symbol, a recognizable sign of the Chernobyl tragedy, known to most people even abroad. But why remove a tower that stood for 27 years after the accident? The tower at the plant wasn't there for nothing, and it wasn't by accident that it had such huge dimensions. Originally, the construction of the Chernobyl plant was part of a strategic development plan. This plan assumed integrating nuclear power plants into the country's energy system with the maximum possible capacities. The RBMK-1000 was the type of reactor that provided a significant increase in electricity output and could put the Soviet Union ahead of the most developed countries. That's why, following the start of operation at the Leningrad, Kursk, and Smolensk plants, in 1970 the construction of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant began. By 1986, four power units were operating at the station, and two more were planned. The Chernobyl plant provided 10% of all energy in the Soviet Union while the costs were minimal. Just imagine, one kilogram of uranium gave the same amount of energy as 30 tons of coal. But on April 26, 1986, everything changed. Looking at the layout of the Chernobyl power plant, we can say that this strategic object had a complex structure. Besides the four main units, the plant included the turbine hall, the compressor station, the nitrogen oxygen station, the diesel power station, and the auxiliary building. No less important in the scheme of the plant were the artificial cooling reservoir and the pumping station. And the ventilation pipe was also an essential part of the project. In addition, the drawings of the plant include many names that we already know well, the drum separator, the steam collectors, the spent fuel pool, and so on. All of this is part of the complex nuclear mechanism. But of course, what concerns us most is the ventilation tower. The task of this tower was to release processed and filtered steam, and exhaust radioactive waste. In simple terms, the ventilation discharge happened through it, because the air in the plant had a certain level of radioactivity. And when released through the pipe, it dispersed with the wind to an unnoticeable concentration. The pipe was also needed to maintain normal radiation conditions in the rooms of the turbine hall and other units. In general, ventilation at a nuclear plant is extremely important, and as practice shows, failures in this system threaten radioactive contamination. In 1993, at the Kola nuclear power plant, there was a radiation release precisely because of a malfunction in the ventilation pipe. The radioactive cloud even managed to reach Norway. But let's return to Chernobyl. The difficulty of constructing VT-2 was that at first the support structures were built up to a certain height. After that, a fragment of the tower itself was delivered, installed in working position, and welded to special mounts. After securing this element and creating the service platform, the next support section was raised by crane and installed higher. Once these supports were mounted, the next element of the gas exhaust pipe was brought in, its diameter was 9 meters. In this simple step-by-step -step way, assembling one element after another, the 75-meter shaft of the second-stage ventilation tower was constructed. The top of VT-2 was located 150 meters above the ground, which is roughly the height of the famous military radar in the one secret town of Chernobyl II. The total weight of the installed tower structures exceeded 320 tons, of which the support structures made up about one-third. In 1986, VT-2 found itself almost at the epicenter of the explosion of the fourth reactor, which led to damage of the supports and heavy contamination of the tower elements with radioactive substances. Some support elements were severely damaged. By the way, it was around this tower that liquidators hid while clearing the roof of the turbine hall. After the accident, about 30 defects were identified. The tower lost its stability. Eyewitnesses said the supports looked like they were hanging in the air, and over time they had to be reinforced. Experts say that these defects included breaks in structural elements, loss of stability in VT2 components, and significant corrosion. In 1998, repairs were carried out on the support structures, funded by foreign countries, the USA and Canada. 
During the repair preparations, highly radioactive sources were found on the service platforms of VT-2. To ensure the radiation safety of the personnel working on the repairs, these hot spots were shielded with lead plates. But at the same time, construction of the Shelter 2 object, the so-called new sarcophagus, was already in full swing. Bypassing the ventilation pipe or covering it with the new structure was extremely difficult technologically, and also too expensive. So engineers chose a different approach, to build a new ventilation system away from the future arch, and to dismantle the old pipe later. And that, later, finally came. In 2013, work began on removing the second stage ventilation tower. At first glance, destroying such a massive structure doesn't seem too complicated. As they say, demolishing is easier than building. Take it apart and haul it away. But in reality, everything turned out to be much more difficult. First of all, we are talking about an object weighing more than 350 tons. That is like seven fully loaded freight cars, and the height of the tower was about 150 meters, roughly equal to a 33-story building. Simply knocking it over would have destroyed hundreds of square meters of the old sarcophagus and released radioactive dust into the air. Dust would have come both from the reactor underneath the pipe and from the pipe itself, which had tons of radioactive soot inside. And because of the high radiation levels, as few people as possible could work on the demolition. This meant that the dismantling had to be done step by step. The project was developed by the State Institute Adam Energostroy project over several months. In the end, they proposed cutting the tower into six sections, removing them one by one, and then storing them in the turbine hall of the third unit. The main dismantling was done using a super heavy crane, DIMAC, with a lifting capacity of 1,600 tons, able to lift 70 tons with a 200 meter boom. There are fewer than 10 such machines in the entire world. This crane was shipped by sea from Italy, where it had been used on other projects, and from the port it was transported to Chernobyl on 92 trucks. No other crane would have worked there. The ventilation tower stood 100 meters from the nearest flat area where a crane could be installed. By the way, similar DIMAC cranes were used to build the first sarcophagus in 1986. Back then, they were needed to throw construction elements onto the plant from a distance, because being close to the unit was impossible. At that time, the Soviet Union paid a huge sum for two such cranes, and after the accident they were cut up and disposed of, like all the metal in the zone. The uniqueness of this work was that the tower had a complex structure, and the surfaces of its elements had a very high level of radioactive contamination. Access to the tower, located 75 meters above the buildings of the plant, was difficult. During the VT-2 removal, special attention had to be given to dismantling elements and separate blocks of the tower, because the crane boom was positioned over a radiation-dangerous object, the shelter. Segments of the tower weighing 55 tons each, filled with radioactive soot and dust, were cut with plasma cutters and lifted away. These lifts were extremely dangerous, if the crane missed or the operator miscalculated and a segment fell into the fourth unit, a new cloud of radioactive dust could have entered the atmosphere. And at that moment on the Chernobyl site, besides the pipe removal workers, there were huge numbers of people working on the construction of Shelter 2. Back then, the arch was still being built, so any radiation problem during the dismantling of the ventilation pipe would have immediately contaminated a large number of people, who most likely would not have had time to evacuate. One way or another, the work was completed on time, but it's wrong to say everything went smoothly. During the lifting of the sixth and second to last segment, the crane safety systems were triggered. The tower shaft and the outer structure had already been cut, but the crane couldn't lift the fragment, it turned out to be much heavier than expected. A massive section of the tower, 9 meters in diameter, hung above the fourth unit while management decided what to do next. Workers had to start the reverse process of re-securing the pipe and welding it back. After that, the heavy fragment was cut into two pieces and moved separately. All this work was done in difficult radiation conditions and at great height. And now we come to the main question, why was it necessary to dismantle a tower that stood for 27 years after the accident? The first reason lies in the tower itself. Its service life was originally set at 30 years, which had obviously passed. Plus, we should remember that this entire structure was damaged by the explosion. This pipe had even lost its stability, and together with the old sarcophagus, it was considered an unstable structure. And an unstable structure is something that can collapse at any moment. Therefore, like the entire Chernobyl plant, the tower needed to be taken out of operation. After all surviving units were shut down, a state-specialized enterprise was created on the base of the Chernobyl plant. 
From that moment, the Chernobyl power plant was no longer a nuclear power plant but rather an object from the past that needed to be dealt with. This leads to the second reason for removing the tower, Shelter 2. The tower simply interfered with properly designing the arch and moving it over the destroyed fourth unit. In fact, Shelter 2 is nothing else but a rescue operation for the entire plant. Years pass, and Shelter 1 continues to deteriorate. The total area of cracks in the sarcophagus already exceeds 1,000 square meters, which leads to the release of radioactive dust and the formation of radioactive liquid after rain. Each year, the probability of collapse increases significantly. In 2013, several hanging slabs simply fell above the turbine hall of the unit. The collapse area was about 600 square meters. After the removal of VT2, the old sarcophagus remains the main threat to the Chernobyl station. If it collapses, the many-ton slabs covering the fourth unit could fall onto the reactor and release radioactive materials that would settle on the inner walls of the new arch, turning everything inside into a giant source of radiation. Working there, as now, would no longer be possible. Radiation levels would be high even beyond the new arch. As we have seen, beneath the old sarcophagus there is a huge amount of radioactive materials mixed with concrete, sand, and other substances used during the accident response. Without disposal and burial, these materials will always pose a danger to the people working at the plant. The deputy chief engineer for nuclear safety of the Chernobyl plant believes that building the arch will not solve the problem of protecting the environment from radioactive releases of the destroyed unit, since the new shelter cannot fully prevent radioactive emissions into the atmosphere. In his opinion, only the construction of a full containment shell can isolate the destroyed reactor from the environment. What will happen in the end, time will tell. Overall, the whole story with removing the ventilation pipe is just the beginning of a long process of fully eliminating the consequences of the accident. In 1986, the nuclear components of the fourth unit were quickly sealed, but the liquidation cannot be completed while the threat of secondary contamination remains. Originally, the task of fully eliminating the Chernobyl power plant was considered in two ways, strengthen dangerous and unstable structures, or dismantle them. In the end, they chose the second option. It was the dismantling of all elements of the plant that was considered necessary. However, this idea was not supported by some experts. They believe that dismantling the shelter object will be impossible, since people must be inside the new arch, and during the dismantling of the old sarcophagus, radioactive dust will rise into the air. The work ahead is really complex and dangerous, and many aspects of the project remain unclear, but some details are already known, which I will cover in one of the next videos. That's it for now, subscribe to the channel and leave your comments under this video.